Hi there folks, Andrew at Chatfield. Today we're gonna to be talking all about, drum roll please, inline stats. This is a new feature in Chatfield that allows you to measure the performance of specific blocks in your bot and allows you, more importantly, to see where bottlenecks are in your sales funnel so you can make informed decisions and take actions accordingly to optimize your conversion rates, boost sales, all that good stuff. So let's dive in here and show you how this actually works because you might be wondering, well, where exactly is this inline stats feature that you're talking about, Andrew? That'd be a great question. And I was actually a little confused by it when we first launched this. So the answer is simple. It's basically a little ninja trick that you have to find, which is right here, this show stats button. So if I click that, at the group level of blocks, it will show the stats for all of the blocks in that group, as you would expect. And here you can see the number of people who have seen the block, who have visited it, and then also the number of people who have clicked through. Now it's important to note with this click-through rate that it's not as granular as you might expect. So this is why you should still use user attributes to track what users are clicking which buttons or quick replies. Because in other words, right now, I could have, let's say, 10 quick replies on this block, and it's just counting anybody who clicked any of those buttons as a click-through rate. So if I wanted to measure just a specific option within that, I wouldn't be able to using inline stats. So very important to mention there, you're not getting the full granularity that you might want with inline stats. Instead, you should use attributes if that's what you're looking for. But another thing to mention in terms of granularity and tracking really narrow information is that with inline stats, it's best practice to split up the steps, each step or action of the customer journey into separate blocks. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say that you're creating a product recommendation bot and you're asking users, let's say five questions to recommend a product according to their needs, desires, et cetera. Let's say you have two questions just starting off. One asks, how old is the person you're shopping for? And the next one asks about, what is your budget for this gift, let's say. So the problem would be is if you put both of those questions or all of those questions into the same block. Because with inline stats, it's just tracking the individual block statistics, right? So if you put all of those into the same block, well then you're really not getting that much detailed information as to where the user is dropping off or disengaging. So again, it's best practice to split up each of those questions because then you could have one question here and another here. And if you see that 10,000 people start off in the first block and then only 1,000 make it to the next, you could say, hey, maybe this first question is poorly worded, maybe the call to action isn't as good as it could be, versus if you have all those questions in one block, you don't know what is the issue, why people aren't progressing and converting. So just keep that in mind, split up each action step of the customer journey as much as possible. That'll give you the most helpful and insightful statistics to make informed decisions about going forward. Now, one other thing to mention here is that you might be asking, well, what's the advantage of using inline stats over the A-B test plugin, right? And they are very similar, I'll admit that, but the big difference is that with the A-B test plugin, yes, you're sending users down different pathways and measuring the performance accordingly, but with that plugin, you're actually controlling for the amount of people, right? With inline stats, you're not. So you can see here that, wow, I have a 100% click-through rate, that's amazing, but what it's not accounting for here, obviously, is the number of people who visit it, only three, right? So it's not statistically significant, it's not that impressive, where with A-B testing, it still might not be statistically significant, but you are comparing apples to apples because you're sending the same amount of people to each variation. So it's very important here to keep in mind these percentages by themselves don't mean as much as they would in let's say the A-B testing plugin. You still wanna look at the absolute numbers right here. Now finally, in closing, one last thing to mention, one cool party trick, if you will, even though it has more use than just a party trick, with this inline stats feature is the ability to view and segment the users in each of these statistics. So what I mean by that is the people who have viewed the block, visited it, and then also those who have clicked through and taken action. So let's say I wanna gauge the popularity of these products, right? I have these 
two, four, six different products, these shirt products, and I wanna say, okay, well, which one is most popular? Which one are users going to most? Here I can see by the numbers that small is the winner. It has the most visited people and the highest click-through rate. So if I wanna narrow down and retarget these users or create a Facebook ad retargeting them, I can do just that. So if I click the viewed icon right here, the I, I can see all these people listed in the people tab, right? This is amazing. I have this very, very granular data of these people. I can then either save them as a segment to retarget them within chat field, or of course, if I wanted to, I could export that as a CSV file, upload that to Facebook as a custom audience or lookalike audience to retarget them with newsfeed ads or sponsored messages as well. And of course, I could do the same with the more engaged and valuable segment of the people who visited this block, those who actually clicked through to, in this case, a Shopify landing page. And if I click that click-through rate, I will see, in this case, the same amount of people since all of them happen to click through. But let's say it was only one person who clicked through. I could then see who that is, reach out to them, and make more informed decisions. So that, in essence, is the new inline stats feature. Again, a little bit different than the A-B testing plugin. They both serve different purposes, but a great way to measure performance in your bot at a high level, see where bottlenecks are in the sales funnel, and then use that information to ultimately improve your conversions, boost sales, and all that good stuff. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. The question I have for you that I want you to respond to is how are you going to use this in your customer journey, in your sales funnel to improve your insights and make more money? Let me know down below and I will see you in the next video. Happy botting.